opening this 45 minute power yoga in stillness and heaviness. And throughout this time, we'll ask and see how the body transforms, how the mind transforms by making different shapes. Walk the hands out further now. Be on your fingertips. Lift the forearms, elbows, upper arm bones to the sky. Stretch. Change to downward facing dog. Lift the hips. And down. Downward facing dog, pedal your feet slowly. Bend the right knee, straighten the left leg, and then change sides. Press both heels evenly down towards the ground. Next breath, come forward to plank pose. Line up the shoulders right over the back of the wrist. Bring the feet close together. Squeeze in the heels, the glutes. Lengthen the tailbone. Tell your abdomen that you go forward rather than down. Hold the top of the plank here for two more breaths. And then step the right foot forward, swing the leg all the way there for your low lunge. Spin the back heel down, walk the hands out towards the left corner of your mat for down dog lunge. Broaden your front knee away from your shoulder, press through your left foot. Walk the hands back in for a plank. Swing your right foot back. And again, hold the top of your plank. Finding the power through the static positions. A little bit of a longer hold here to transform at the beginning of the practice. Swing your left foot forward into the low lunge now. Spin the back heel down. Transfer a little more weight into the back foot, not just the front. Walk your hands out towards the right corner of the mat for that down dog lunge on the second side. Let's walk our hands back in. Again, plank pose, swing the left leg back. Anytime we approach plank, know that it can be from your toes or from your knees. Try to keep the long spine, a little look ahead of the hands. And shift downward facing dog. Bend your knees a lot and walk your hands backwards to your feet. Twisted power pose. So bring the hands up towards the chest in prayer position. Bend the knees a lot still. And twist left elbow to the outside of the right knee. It can hook or stay more lifted. across your center and go to the second side, right elbow to the outside of the left knee. And twist, bring it back to the center, standing forward, fold fingertips to the ground, make your legs as straight as they go as you 
Stretch through the hamstrings down to the calves. Bring your hands to the waist, point the elbows to the sky, press down into your feet, come all the way up to standing, reach both arms to the sky as you do so. Good, hold on to your left wrist, reach over towards your right side. Inhale, come back across your center, or hold on to the second wrist, up and over. Inhale, come back to the center, let's get things moving a little bit quicker. Forward fold, walk it out to plank pose. Flat down to the mat. Cobra, peel the chest up. Change to downward facing dog. Step the right foot through. High lunge. Lift the torso, lift the arms vertical. Take one breath. Change to twisted lunge. Left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Untwist, step back to plank, change to down dog, lift the hips, lift the left leg up and back, step it all the way through, come up to your high lunge, again one breath in the vertical lunge, and then change to the twist, lean forward, hook the right elbow across the left thigh, Twisted lunge. This time as you untwist, step forward, both feet to the front end of the mat. Half lift. Forward fold. Stand up, reach both arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. We'll keep flowing here. Inhale, lift the arms again. Exhale, fold over. Half lift. Step back to plank. Let's go through the whole vinyasa flow. Lower down to the mat. Cobra, feel the chest, heart up. Change to downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift the hips. Right side, lift the right leg up. Three leg, three leg a dog. Pull the knee to the chest, hover forward and hold for a moment. So it's like that plank pose hold, but now with one knee lifted. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And step the foot all the way through. High lunge, bring the torso and arms vertical. This time hold on to your left wrist and reach over to the right side in that crescent shape. Stretch a little bit more into the side of the torso as well as the front of the left thigh. As you bring that back to neutral, spin the back heel down, open up warrior two. Let your hips and shoulders face that long edge of your yoga mat. Gaze out over your front fingertips. Static hold, stay with it. Breathe here. Let the power, the intensity come now through the hold. And then cartwheel the hands down around the front foot. Step back to plank. Lift the hips, downward facing dog. Let's try that sequence on the second side with the left leg up. Pull the knee to the chest as you hover and hold forward. Transforming through quickness and then slowness, back and forth. Step the left foot through, come up to high lunge. Hold on to the right wrist, reach over towards the left side. 
down that long side body stretch coming into the right hip flexor. As you release the hands back to a neutral high lunge, change to warrior two, send the back heel down, open up towards the long edge, extend the arms in either direction, squeeze out over the left fingertips. One more breath here. Nicely done. Cartwheel your hands around the front foot. Step back to plank. Lower down to the mat. Cobra. Peel the chest up. Stay here. Two more breaths of this cobra. Great. Take it to child's pose. Press the hips back to the heels. Like the beginning of class, get heavy again. Sink into the legs, into the arms, forehead, all the way down to the mat. To change from here, sit upright on your heels. You can be kneeling if you prefer. And then just add in an easy, simple twist over your right shoulder. Look to the side. Add nice and simple to the second side. As you come back to the middle, Simply stand up however you wish to stand. Stand in the center of your yoga mat. This is a longer balance sequence. Think about it pose by pose, and yet we're going to intricately link them together. When you're in the singular pose, stay with it. Think of it statically, and then we'll flow them together. As you stand in the middle of the mat, lift the arms up to the sky. Pull the right knee up and into the chest. Then kick the right foot back and tilt the torso forward for warrior three. Don't worry about what comes next. Just stay with warrior three. And now flow that into Side moon pose, half moon pose, left arm down, right arm up. This pose changes to side plank. You have to bring it all down to full plank. And then open again, right arm. Right leg up. Balance on your left hand outer edge of the left foot. Sweep the right foot all the way forward into a low lunge. Come up to high lunge, arms to the sky. You step your weight forward onto the right leg, pick up the left knee. You're ready for that flow on the second side. Kick the left foot back, tilt forward, warrior three. Half moon, drop the right hand down for more security. And then open the hips, shoulders to the side, left arm to the sky, half moon pose. Knowing the side plank is next, maybe this time you can keep left hand lifted, drop your left foot down, plant your right hand, and sweep your right foot back. 
side plank. Three up the left leg. And then sweep it forward into the low lunge. Come up to high lunge. You get to keep two feet on the floor here. Wide angle uh, forward fold. Just bend the heel down and fold over. Wide legged forward fold, I should say. My apologies. Bring your hands back to the waist, press down through your feet, and come all the way upright in the torso, heel toe the to feet together. Shake it out. Bend the knees, sit down into your thighs, Uttkatasana. Still into our balance series from Uttkatasana across your right ankle over the left knee. Figure four shape. Opportunity to stay right here in this sit with the arms up or fold further over, drop the arms down. This can turn into an arm balance by placing the hands flat, leaning your right shin onto your upper arms. Like you would in crane pose, the head needs to come forward and a little bit down to transfer the weight of the body and get the left foot off of the floor. If the left foot is still up, bring it back down. Everyone walk it back up to your figure four with arms up. Utkatasana, two legs down. Remember, we're taking it pose by pose, even though they link together. Stay right here. Chair pose. I know it burns. Do your best. Second side, cross the left ankle over your right thigh, making a figure four shape. If arms get to be too much, then come to the waist. The hips allow, take the fingertips down to the ground, hold in a little more. Option to go to the flat hands. Lean your shin against the upper arm bones, hook the left foot around the outer right arm. Lean the head a little bit forward and down to pick up the right foot. Walk it back to your figure four with arms extended. Two feet to the mat, Uttkatasana. Stand up. Release the arms down by your side. Stand in mountain pose for a couple of breaths. Take it all in. See power in the base all the way up. Out the crown of the head. One more work in our standing balance series here. Again, like figure four, take the right ankle over the left thigh and point the knee out to the side as much as you can. This time as you bend the standing leg, a little bit, grab hold of your lifted leg. Pick it up, stand up again, straighten the standing leg. So standing pigeon pose here, we've got that full external rotation in the top hip. Try to press down through the base of your big toe on the left foot to help stabilize. If you like a deeper hold here, you can wrap forearms or even elbows to the crease of the foot and knee. Try 
try to bring your torso as much upright as you can in any of those three options. Come out of the first side, shake it out, give it a moment, and go to the second side, press the left ankle over, point the knee out to the side. Option one, stay there. Option two, a little bend in the knee to help you hunch over and hold on to the leg and then pick it up. This will give us the easiest option to go with a straight leg and a fully vertical spine. If you're digging into forearm wrap or elbow wrap, know that your torso is probably gonna be a little bit more forward or a lot more forward like me. No big deal. But you can try bending the standing leg again to help give you a little bit more access, hamstrings less locked to come back more vertical. What parts of the body need that little more ease and flow and where needs to be or is more stuck or static? Slowly release from the pose, two feet back down to the ground. Walk to the top of your mat. From all of that balance, I always like a clearing of an easy sun salutation. Arms up to the sky, fold over, half lift. Easy meaning something we've done a lot of times. Easy in the brain. Step back to plank, lower it down to the floor. Lift the chest for cobra. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Here. Look to your hands, step, jump, or walk to the front end of the mat. Half lift, forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms to the sky. One more time, exhale, fold over. Keep the right foot forward, step your left foot back so you're in a low lunge. We'll stay low to the mat for the rest of practice. So bring the hands to the inside of the foot. Get a little bit more space. Forearm lunge, go down as much as makes sense. Left forearm, right forearm. Maybe they're stacked under a block if you have one nearby. If the forearms don't work, you can stay lifted on the hands. Feel free to release the back knee down to the mat for a little more stability in the pose, which makes this one a little bit more accessible. Calm the nerves, calm the breath, keeping the limbs on the ground now. Walk it back up to the hands, quad stretch, bend the back knee, pull the heel in. You can stay right there, take this into a twist, bounce on the left hand so that the right hand is free to reach back and hold on to your foot. Pull it closer in. Release the quad stretch and switch sides. Step forward, step back. Ends with the left foot forward and the right foot back. Come down to your forearm lunge. Right knee can stay lifted if you prefer. We'll go ahead and let it sink down.
slow down the breath here. And walk it back up to the hands to the right heel in towards the sit bone. Keep it like that or add the twisted hold left hand free. Reach up and back. Release the back foot. Change back to downward facing dog. Swing the left foot backwards, lift the hips high, downward facing dog. Come forward to plank in life, flat down on the belly. Bow poses next, bend both knees. You choose your version of bow, bow pose. Reach your hands back, but don't hold on, or do hold on to the front of your feet or as far down as to your ankles, and try lifting everything that you can up away from the ground. So thighs lift, chest lifts, stretch your knees back, bring your chest forward. Release, child's pose. A third time in that very heavy, released child's pose. Notice perhaps how mind, body are showing up a bit differently here than they did the first time, the second time we entered this pose in this practice. This practice, these shapes, constantly allowing us to change, to transform, even though the same shapes are repeated again and again. All right, now we change to a seated position. Stretch the legs straight out in front of you. Flex your feet, point the toes straight up, knees straight up, Dandasana, hands just right down by your side. As you gaze at your toes, spread, your, spread them as wide as you can, like trying to pull the big toes towards each other with the pinky toes away from each other. Keeping that forward fold. Reach your hands to hold on to your feet or just drape the arms down by your side. Imagine your head coming towards your ankles. And we're trying to keep a pretty long line of the spine even as we naturally curve from head towards tailbone. Bring yourself back upright. And this is like seated pigeon pose, so we try to do the same thing standing. You don't have to worry about balance now. Hold on to your right leg by holding on to the foot and the knee, and you're doing that open book, external rotation. Again, you've got the three holds, either foot and knee or forearms with a hook around elbows.
From here, we're going into the arm balance. Wear your leg. Pull your leg up as high as you can onto the shoulder. Clamp your foot down. Place the hands on either side like we did a moment before in Dandasana. So you're trying to get the torso still much like the L shape, but lift your butt and heel up. Down through the hands, let everything else rise up. Lower back to the shape of Dandasana. Remembering we're going to come here again. And then grab hold of the left leg. Take any of those three figure four seated pigeon options. Push through your big toe. Try to pull back on the pinky toe so as not to sickle the foot. You'll notice a little bit more action in the rotation of the hip as you do that. Okay, let's take the left knee as far back as possible, the heel high, and that should help you wrap up onto the shoulder, and I lift that side of the butt up as I do so, and clamp the heel down, place the hands as if you were back into that full Dandasana L shape, and press hands down to get your Butt lifted, maybe the heel also. And then release, two feet back down to the ground. Seated forward, fold, let it fold over again. So from that sense of drawing in to strength and power, just fold in, knees fully now. Come back upright. We're going to give the outer hips as much love as we have. So more of an internal rotation as you take the right foot towards the left uh, hip. And think more knee down here, knee to knee. Either fold over by catching the extended leg here. Or Extended leg, heel goes in towards the outer hip, and you're in that cow face legs, fold over. After all of the external hip rotation, we're working more outer hips, more internal rotation here. This is always just a nice neutralizing position for me. Helps especially when I'm practicing in the morning to have more of those neutralizing positions so that I feel really steady as I go about the day. Okay. We'll lean back, unwind the legs, give them a little bit of a shake. Second side, so it's left heel comes up. We take it towards the outer right hip, and then instead of the knee being close to the chest, press it forward down. Again, you can keep the bottom leg extended. If it works for you, kick the heel in. Still trying to sit pretty evenly through both sides of the butt and fold it over. Sufficiently neutralize. Bring your torso up. Unwind your legs again. Give them a little bit of a pass. Change one more time to soles of the feet together, knees out to the side, and Baddha Konasana. Stay upright or fold over.
you fold it over, come back upright. Everybody take your knees in. Switch to lie down onto your mat. Got a little extra in store for you, but we are nearing our end. Legs straight up into the air. We're going to leg raises, so for most support, you can sit on your hands. For more challenge, take your hands behind the head and lift head and shoulders up. Glue the feet together and then lower them down until they're about a foot above the ground. And take the legs back up to where you started. Do this slow, lower the legs. And lift. Five more times. Lower. And lift. For two. Three. Four. One more time. Five, release the head and shoulders down. If they are lifted, hug the knees into the chest. Soles of the feet to the mat. Bridge pose, press down into the feet, shoulders, head, lift the hips. Toes and knees can turn a little bit out to the side if it gives you more access and feels good in the body. Line up. And then everyone lower the hips back, down. Half happy baby. Take just the right knee into the chest. Elbow to the inside of the leg. Hold on to the outside of your foot. Like you're trying to stand on the ceiling. Push your foot up to the sky. But let the hand pull the leg down towards the outer right side. So I called this half happy baby. A lot of people call it a reclined lunge, especially if you extend the left leg straight, heel on the ground. You can see how it's that same low lunge shape, just flipped upside down. Really, so you go back, two feet on the ground. Take half happy baby or that reclined lunge on the second side. Left arm goes to the inside of the leg, but hold on to the outside of the foot. Bit of that tug of war, the foot's trying to press up to the sky, but the hand should always win here to pull you down. Deep bend in the knee, maybe even front of the thigh on the ground. You can extend the right leg, help to balance the weight a little bit more. Well done, friends. Release. Wiggle out. Any last bits of movement? Neutralizing, unwinding that you'd like. Do it here. And settle into your stillness, whether it's lying on your back for Shavasana. Or you can make your way to a seated position for a moment of meditation. Within that stillness, notice your breath. Try to make the breath even or a lengthened exhale.
little more time in this release and stillness. Slowly make your way back to a seated position, if not already. Let's take two guided breaths together, a hand over your heart, hand over the belly. Connect the two places with this inhale. Breathe from belly, space in between, up to the top hand. Exhale from top hand, space in between, down to the bottom hand. One more guided breath together, belly, ribs, and chest, chest, ribs. Now full graciousness to yourself, each other, and this practice. If you'd like to send yourself into the next space with me through the sound of OM, you can join in by singing along, listening, or tune it out. Empty the breath here. Take another breath in. Uh, Thank you.